Hi, I'm Brian Henson. The Muppet fans are sometimes really crazy people. It's amazing. Every crazy little walk-on character, they know the name. So, if you want a few facts that'll impress your friends, tell them about these characters. Here's Wayne and Wanda. These two were an accident-prone singing duo who were in the pilot, but only actually lasted through the first season. Say something to me. Or how about Betsy Bird? She was a beautiful, eccentric dancing bird who appeared in several shows, but she never really quite took off. Or here's Fleet Scribbler, who's an abrasive tabloid reporter that the press loved, but the show's writers couldn't stand. Muppets banned press reporter thrown out by fraud. He was soon written out of the show. Just keep watching, and you might see Fleet and a few other unsung Muppet heroes on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. The Great Gonzo is one of our most popular characters. He's also one of our weirdest. My father first built the original Gonzo for a special called the Great Santa Claus Switch. They called him Cigar Box Freckle because he lived in a cigar box. When The Muppet Show started, performer Dave Goles turned this puppet into the Great Gonzo, a daredevil obsessed with both art and danger. Looks like it's another wipeout for Gonzo. But throughout the first season, Gonzo's drooping eyelids tended to make him look sad. So Dave Goles rebuilt the puppet himself with moving eyelids so that he could be the artistic maverick he was meant to be. From that point on, the character literally took off. There, that was easy, wasn't it? Here he is, the great Gonzo and the Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. The Muppet Show was originally shot in Elstree, just north of London. And it was a wonderful process to watch. You walk out of these dingy London streets and then you go inside the stage and this brightly colored, crazy, frenetic energy. The way the show was shot, though, is it took three frantic days to shoot each episode. One thing that was amazing is the audience, for some reason, always thought that the show was shot live, which always astounded me, because if you watch The Muppet Show, every shot is a special effect. Every, there's a little trick going on everywhere, and it took a lot of time and a lot of effort to sort of pull that together. Of course, the real audience for The Muppet Show, as you see in the show, is a bunch of Muppet monsters and various creatures, because we always knew they would laugh at the right times. The monsters in the audience particularly enjoyed this show, and I hope you do too. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. You know, comedy is really difficult. One thing that happens with comedy writers is that they are all really good at coming up with beginnings, really good setups, but they can't figure out how to pay them off. Hey, uh, hey uh, that's nice, but you know, if you keep applauding, you won't hear my monologue. Mm, okay, okay. Oh, but, but, of course, that doesn't mean I want you to sit on your hands. Don't worry, we won't. Good. Yeah, if we sit on our hands, we can't throw things at you. <laughs> well, now I'll share with you one of the real secrets to the Muppets. What my father figured out was, you know, if you can't get out, you just either blow something up, or you eat something, or you just throw penguins in the air. Well, here it is, the Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. The Muppets have always gotten a lot of fan mail. Over the years, we've received thousands of letters, and believe it or not, we do try to read and answer every one of them. Dear Kermit, my cousin Diane has a pet frog, and she named him Kermit. <laughs> the staff received a memorable letter from a Scandinavian businessman who saw the show while on a trip to London. He wrote to inform my father that the Muppet Show's so-called Swedish chef did not actually speak any real Scandinavian language, not even Swedish. The Muppet Show head writer Jerry Jewell sent a reply saying, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We were going to fire the chef on the spot, but he has got a wife and family, and he promises to take Swedish lessons. So here's the Swedish chef and all your other favorite Muppets, on The Muppet Show.
Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Let me tell you a little bit about how we train to perform the Muppets. It's kind of an interesting process because what we do is we, we watch a monitor that shows us what the camera's seeing, and we reach up and we work the puppet with our other hand. And it's a complicated process. But the idea is that you're meant to look into the monitor and bring to life that character and be the audience and the audience's point of view. We are trying to put on a classy show here. <laughs> you can't treat me like that. I'll stick my pet barracuda on you. Get her, Kevin. Of course, it's real difficult because when the character turns to the right, but the camera sees it turning to the left, which means you always have to think backwards. Of course, it's the Muppet, so thinking backwards comes naturally. Here's the Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Everyone knows that my father performed Kermit the Frog, but he also did a lot of other characters. He performed the Swedish Chef, <laughs> Dr. Teeth, money, 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 money. Ralph the Dog, to the next patient. Waldorf. The show is murder. And Link Hogfrog. Everybody wants to be a macho, macho man. To have the kind of body that's always in demand. Link Hogthrob is actually one voice that I remember very well. As a kid, whenever my dad did some stereotypical fatherly chore, like carving the Thanksgiving turkey, that would be the voice he would use. Well, surely you recognize the independent heating slash unifying element and the horizontal equalizing plane? I guess when the character of this pompous, not too bright pig came along, he figured, well, that voice would fit just perfectly. See if you can tell which characters are my father's voices in this next episode of The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. When you watch The Muppet Show, it's the only show on air where you're actually only seeing the top 18 inches of the action. And in a lot of ways, what goes on underneath the camera frame is just as exciting and sometimes more exciting than what's going on in front of the camera. You think about it, this is the way it is. The camera's shooting basically from the top of your head up to your hand. And that's the way all the performers are working. And they're all watching monitors to see what the camera can see. And it's great fun watching the performers underneath, watching them jockeying for position and people reaching between each other trying to get to an arm run. It's really, it's a bit like watching a pit stop at an Indy 500 race. It's really quite impossible, which is what makes it so much fun to do. Here's the Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Rita Moreno. She's one of my all-time favorite guest stars. What? I just have to tell you that I have always been a Muppet nut. Oh, that I love good. all of you so much. It also was the first episode that featured the long-running, long punning sketch, Veterinarian's Hospital, which, by the way, is Dr. pretty Bob, much where Miss Piggy got her start as well. Yourself. You call yourself a doctor, Dr. Bob? I'd never call myself a doctor. They don't come when you call them anyway. <laughs> Rita Moreno was the first performer to win an Oscar, a Tony, a Grammy, and an Emmy. She won her Emmy as best performance by a guest on a comedy variety show for her appearance in this episode. You give me so here it is, The Muppet Show, starring Rita Moreno. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Everyone remembers the read-through for this particular episode of The Muppet Show. Edgar Bergen entered carrying a little black suitcase, and every person in the room knew what was in that suitcase. Charlie McCarthy. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry, I don't usually talk to frogs, you oh, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Sometimes I, I have dinner with frogs, though. Oh, well, that's nice. Yes, they're delicious. <laughs> Charlie was a legendary character on stage and on radio and then on TV. Frankly, he was like a puppet hero to the Muppets. Our mate check. We don't want to have no fun. Right. For you real Muppet fans, this is the episode where Fozzie tries to be a ventriloquist. Say something, AJ. And Gonzo wrestles a brick. 
Here it is, The Muppet Show with Edgar Bergen. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Steve Martin. It was a very different kind of Muppet Show. See, you're gonna feel right at home around here. There was no laugh track, so you can actually hear the Muppet performers laughing along at what's going on. The episode features the talents of such legends as these strange alien fezzoobs and the Flying Zucchini Brothers. Marvin Suggs and his all-food glee club. We have no bananas today. Bananas today. All this and, of course, Steve Martin's balloon animals. Oh, really? Puppy dog! Wow! Oh, I love Thank that you. one. That's so cute. Thank you very much. Here he is, the wonderful Steve Martin in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This next episode of The Muppet Show stars Madeline Kahn. This is Eric the Yodeling Clam. Oh, well, if you're busy, I'll... No, 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 no. Uh, Eric, uh, take five. Ah! Oh, I get him! Oh, oh, oh. This show also features two timeless Muppet favorites, Happy Feet, which is a classic tap dance number that Kermit does. Cause I've got hap, hap, happy feet. If you watch closely, you never actually see his feet. You don't ever see his legs or his feet, which is the most ridiculous way to approach a tap dance number. But it's a great piece. The other piece that's become a huge hit is a piece where the Swedish chef is trying to cook a lobster, and then these bandito lobsters come and save the lobster that the chef is trying to cook. Arriba! Here it is, Madeline Kahn and The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. George Burns is the guest star in this episode of The Muppet Show. What is that? It's my new act, Gonzo Fiddles While George Burns. I like that joke. It's a pleasure to hear something that's older than I am. One of my favorite bits to watch for is the monster and machine sketch, where the monster slowly eats the machine bit by bit. It has a wonderful and typically Muppet twist ending. In conclusion, nothing can keep this machine from performing its primary function, which is to be the most powerful exploding device known to man. After the shooting of this episode, my father received a thank you letter from George Burns. At my age, it said, Miss Piggy is starting to look good to me. I could never say no to a lady. Well, you don't have to worry, then it's only Miss Piggy. <laughs> Here he is, George Burns on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Rudolf Nureyev. Don't you uh, talk to strangers? It depends on how strange the stranger is. Nureyev is one of the 20th century's greatest ballet dancers, and perhaps the last person you'd expect to find on The Muppet Show. They contacted Nureyev to find out what he wanted to do with The Muppets, and he said, I'd love to dance with Miss Piggy. Well, of course, with Miss Piggy, it's kind of hard to do a ballet sequence because she's generally only seen from the waist up. So what they did was they built this crazy, big, kind of goofy pig costume to dance with Nureyev. The dance floor was a little slick, and Nureyev actually taught us a little trick. He said, you mop the floors with Coca-Cola. So as you watch this episode, check out the sticky floors and the extra large pig on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Elton John. And at the time that we did this show, he was just coming out of a phase where he was doing those flamboyant costumes and those big crazy glasses and feathers everywhere. And it was wonderful and it particularly excited the Muppets, the idea of having Elton on the show doing all that crazy stuff. Until they called him and asked him what he wanted to do and he said, you know, I'll do anything, but what I really don't want to do is I don't want to do those crazy flamboyant costumes with all the big feathers and big glasses and stuff, so <laughs> naturally. That was a bit of a problem to the Muppets because that was what they were really look, 
looking forward to. So this whole episode is about the Muppets really wanting him to do that flamboyant, crazy look and him not wanting to. But as always, the Muppets sort of went out in the end. Boy, Elton, you look weird. Here it is, Elton John and the Muppets. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Julie Andrews. Julie and the Muppets had worked together several times before actually doing this episode in a number of TV specials. In fact, in this show, you'll see her sing a song with Kermit called When You Were a Tadpole. When you were a tadpole. She wrote this song earlier for one of her own specials. Another moment to look for in this episode is an appearance by a real cow. Kermit, that's a cow! <laughs> now that sounds simple enough, but you have to realize that every set is built five feet off the ground and is really not meant to carry much weight. They had an awful lot of nervous puppeteers surrounding a very nervous cow on a five-foot platform. The cow naturally didn't do anything he was meant to do, but at least he didn't jump off the stage. Here it is, the cow, Julie Andrews, and the Muppets in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Peter Sellers. It is I, Boris, with his sobbing violin. Do you got any requests? Yes, but you're gonna play anyway. <laughs> A very funny story about this episode is Peter basically said that he wanted to do anything in the show except for one piece. There was a piece called The Wall where Kermit would interview the guest star for 30 seconds just about themselves. Oh, I thought we'd just sit here and chew the fat for a while. Oh, Kermit. <laughs> and Peter said, I can't do that. I can't be myself. Ask me to do anything, but don't ask me to be myself. I'll be Queen Victoria, but I don't know how to be me. Naturally, the Muppet Show writers did a wonderful piece where they had him play Queen Victoria. Bill John Brown. We are ready to receive him. Here it is, The Muppet Show, with Peter Sellers. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars the legendary Bob Hope. Bob Hope and the Muppets worked quite a lot together over the years. The Muppets were guests on several of his specials, and okay. Bob did cameos in The Muppet Movie and the special Miss Piggy's Hollywood. In this episode, Bob was always on his way in or out of the theater, going from one benefit engagement to another. I'm already late for my next benefit, the Japanese pole vaulter's retirement fund. His schedule in real life was so tight that he only had time for one production number and a few talk spots. The show ends with that production number, Don't Fence Me In, between Bob and his Muppet horse. Oh, give me light. It's a very funny effect where the puppeteers who were working the feet and the head were dressed in blue and then matted out of the scene so that you don't see them. It's a great sequence. Here it is, and Bob Hope in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars John Cleese. John particularly became very close with The Muppets, and he immediately created a bond with the writers on The Muppet Show, and he wanted to get involved in the writing. So together they came up with this ridiculous concept where John doesn't want to be on the show. So the great thing is that this whole Muppet show is about the Muppets trying to get John to be on the show, but John's trying to get off the show. Because there is no way I'll do a song. There is no way he'll do a song. One great scene to watch for is where John tries to fix Gonzo's arms and ends up stretching them six feet long and ending up nodding his arms all around his body. Are you done? But the more he hurts Gonzo, of course, the more Gonzo loves it. And here's the episode. I hope you love it. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Gilda Radner. For me, one of the special moments to look out for in this episode is an Eskimo version of Lullaby of Broadway. Come on along and listen to the Lullaby of Broadway. For me, this is a nice piece because there's a penguin in that that I actually built at the time. And of course, this episode also 
contains a wonderful classic Muppet misunderstanding. There's a moment where Gilda asks for a seven-foot parrot to appear with her. A seven-foot tall talking parrot? Fine, I wrote you in the letter. Yeah, well, well, I got your letter, but I couldn't quite read your handwriting. <laughs> parrot. What'd you think I asked for? <laughs> and as my father used to say, it's a perfectly terrible joke, but it's worthy of us. Here it is, the Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Just when people were beginning to think the Muppets were really, really wholesome, my father went out and booked one of the most controversial acts of the 1970s, Alice Cooper. Welcome to my one of Alice's songs was so controversial at the time, it was banned in most high schools across the country. It was called School's Out. School's out oh, and then to balance out all of that craziness that Alice brought to the show, my father had probably one of the sweetest pieces we've ever done on The Muppet Show, which is Robin the Frog singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. episode has a little bit of something in it for everyone. Here it is, The Muppet Show with Alice Cooper. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. The guest star in this episode of The Muppet Show is Liberace. I think it's safe to say that he's actually more flamboyant than Miss Piggy. <laughs> You know what, there's enough carrots here to feed all the rabbits in the world. For some reason, my father thought it would be hilarious to put Liberace together with all these exotic-looking Muppet birds. Now if you run it, do it. During that number, you should keep an eye on Ralph the dog. It was a complicated little thing that was going on, because the number was being performed live. And Liberace is playing the piano, and then he gets up, and Ralph has to start playing the same piano immediately afterwards. Well, you can imagine with a puppet, it's very hard to play a piano when you can't actually see the keys. So we had a performer off camera who was playing a piano when Ralph was meant to be playing Liberace's piano. Here is The Muppet Show, starring Liberace. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This was one of Raquel Welsh's first forays into song and dance. There's a couple of great moments from this show that I can never forget. One is the opening number where she gets to dance with a giant spider. The spider was performed by Graham Fletcher, a dancer with the Royal Ballet in England. Another great moment is when Raquel gets to sing her solo at the end, I'm a woman. And not surprisingly, Miss Piggy feels threatened by having Raquel Welsh on the show, and she pushes in and forces the number into a duet. Well, I can scoop up a great big dipper, full of lard from the drippings can, throw it in the skillet, go out and do my shopping, and be back to Fort Melts in the pan, yes, I'm a woman. Here she is, the beautiful and sexy Raquel Welsh on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Harry Belafonte. Deo! Deo! He's an amazing guy. He's very spiritual, very powerful. Once you've met Harry Belafonte, your life changes. Undoubtedly, Harry's most important contribution to this episode is the closing number. It's a mystical African song called Turn the World Around. We come from the mountain, roping on the mountain, go back to the mountain, turn the world around. The African mass puppets were built especially for this number. Years later, Harry did a reprise of this song at my father's memorial service. It was probably the most important and powerful moment in the whole ceremony. Harry continues to be a great friend to the family. He was a great friend of my father's, and this is where we all met. Here he is in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars John Denver. Hold eight kids and four hand 
He was not only a terrific performer, but also a good friend of my father's. In fact, he and my father had similar interests in preserving the planet. Mother Earth will make you strong. In this episode you're about to watch, John and Kermit try to convince the gang to go on a camping trip. Did you expect moi to carry that heavy thing? Sure. They don't have much luck on this show, but they did go camping several years later on a special that we did together with John called Rocky Mountain Holiday. John Denver was a good friend of the Muppets, and we miss him. But here he is on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. In this next episode of The Muppet Show, starring Kenny Rogers, Kermit takes a beating all the way through the episode. Maybe it's all worth it because eventually he ends up being treated by a witch doctor in a scene that grows into a crazy Muppet musical number called The Lime and the Coconut. You put the lime in the coconut, you treat the mold up, you put the lime in the coconut, you treat the mold up, you put the This episode also contains another great musical number. It's a very straightforward and beautifully done version of Kenny Rogers' big hit song, The Gambler. Here's The Muppet Show starring Kenny Rogers. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show starring Liza Minnelli is from the fifth season of the series. And by that time they were getting real experimental with the format. This episode is a full-fledged murder mystery. Are you Kermit the Private Eye? Just like it says on a door, sweetheart. Oh, good. Liza is one of those incredible professional performers. And while shooting this episode, she would shoot all day long with the Muppets. And then at night, she rushed down to Covent Garden in London, where she was performing a series of concerts. Take a bow, honey, everything's coming up rosy. Talk about a trooper. Hey, you seem to know a lot about these people, kid. Do you know which one is the killer? I sure do. You do? Why, why who? The murderer is. Here is The Muppet Show, starring Liza Minnelli. See if you can figure out who done it. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show you're about to see stars Mark Hamill and C-3PO and R2-B2. Excuse me, Master Luke, but what is this strange world we've come to? Beats me, 3PO. Seems we've landed on some sort of comedy variety show planet. In this episode, they kidnap the pigs in spaceship, the swine track. They land on a planet, Coosbane, and even do battle with a mysterious villain who calls himself Dirt Nader. Oh, no! Dirt Nader! Who? Who looks a lot like the great Gonzo. The world will never know! Frank Oz, who is the performer of Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, Animal, and a lot of other characters, performed Yoda in three of the Star Wars films. For Star Wars fans and Muppet fans, here's The Muppet Show, starring Mark Hamill, R2-D2, and C-3PO. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars former Supreme Diana Ross. In this episode, she performs Love Hangover, which features the largest Muppets ever made. They're called the Gawky Birds and the Boss Men. The Boss Men are the really tall ones. And the way they're performed is really cool. The puppeteers stand behind the characters dressed in black, working controls that are painted black, so you don't actually even see the puppeteers. It's an amazing effect. In this episode of The Muppet Show, the audience is so packed with Diana Ross fans that they hate everything except for her. Right now, the score is Diana Ross 10, Muppets 3. They even hate those singing fish, the Gills Brothers, and Fozzie doing what may be his shortest comedy act ever. Hiya, 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 hiya. Oh! Oh! Buy ya, buy ya, buy ya, buy ya, buy ya. Here it is, The Muppet Show with Diana Ross. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. 
This episode of The Muppet Show stars the legendary dancer, choreographer, actor, director, Gene Kelly. My arms are Gene, but I'd always like to When Gene was first booked on the show, he said to the writers, I just don't want to do singing in the rain. Well, of course, the writers turn this into a running gag in which the Muppets keep trying to get Gene to do his signature song. Hey, is Gene excited about doing singing in the rain on the show? Well, he doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> and finally, in the end, as usual, the Muppets win out. I'm singing, singing the There's a great little sketch in this one where Kermit dances full figure, and you see him head to toe dancing. The way we did it was the performers doing the arms and legs are standing in shot in the background, but they're wearing black against a black background, so it's invisible to the camera. Here it is, Gene Kelly on The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This next episode stars James Coburn. For a change, we have a real Hollywood tough guy with us. Well, this, the Easter Bunny? When Coburn came on the show, my father asked him what his favorite character was, and he immediately replied, Animal. So you'll see the running gag through the episode is the relationship between James Coburn and Animal. There's right ways and wrong ways to handle aggression. Yeah, if you, you don't want to bust a chair up like that. You want to bust it up like that. But my favorite moment is the scene where James Coburn tries to relax Animal enough to meditate. Relaxed. Are you relaxed? Here it is, The Muppet Show, starring James Coburn. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Brooke Shields was the youngest guest star to appear on The Muppet Show. She was only 15 at the time. Hi, I'm Alice. Who are you? Oh, no time for that. I'm looking for a hole. Looking for a hole? A hole what? Because she was only 15 when she did the show, she was only allowed to shoot a few hours each day. So when she wasn't shooting, she liked to hang around The Muppet Workshop and help build characters. In fact, there's one number in which she actually helped build the Slithy Toves characters. And the moon rats out gray. This particular sketch is described by Scooter in the show as the weirdest thing the show has ever done, and he may be right. Well, at least you're in the scene so you know what it is. Have you seen the scene? Even when you know what it is, you don't know what it is. Here it is, Brooke Shields in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This next episode of The Muppet Show features Senor Wences, a puppeteer and ventriloquist whose most famous character, Johnny, was painted on his hand, like this. Hello. Not too much. Open like me. Ah. Go. Show me you don't. Very good. In addition to his hand, Senior Wences' other characters included Cecilia, a puppet chicken, and Pedro, a ventriloquist dummy head. That's right, just the head. OK. It's all right. All right which proved that Senior Wences was sufficiently insane to work with the Muppets. Personally, I don't care for puppets much. I don't find them believable. I don't believe you! Oh! <laughs> There's even a second guest star, Bruce Schwartz, who is a great puppeteer who performs a Japanese ghost story with beautiful Japanese puppets. Here is The Muppet Show, starring Senior Wences and Bruce Schwartz. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Debbie Harry. One way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. One now, at the time, I was in high school, and my father knew that Debbie Harry was like the biggest thing in the world to me. And he booked her to be on The Muppet Show during a vacation week from school, and he didn't tell me. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection. We went out to dinner the night before shooting, and they made me sit next to Debbie Harry at this fancy restaurant. And I just remember this whole dinner, I was just endlessly sweating, and all I knew was that I was aware of Debbie Harry sitting on the side of me. I don't think I ever said a word to her. I don't think I ever looked at her. But she did a great episode. She's a great performer, and she's a lovely lady. 
And here she is, Debbie Harry in The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This is the only episode of The Muppet Show where every single song is written by one artist. And that artist is the show's guest star, Paul Simon. It's been a long, long day. Paul's work is so full of great imagery that it was perfect for the Muppets. For instance, the big production number that starts out the show, Scarborough Fair, is done as an elaborate old English fair filled with bears and pigs and frogs and ornate period costumes. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. This episode also features one of the more bizarre Muppet creations, Bobby Benson and his all-baby band. Here it is, The Muppet Show, starring Paul Simon. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. This episode of The Muppet Show stars Carol Burnett. I'll have you know I am a lady! Ah! This particular episode was also a favorite of the Muppet Show writers because they won an Emmy for Best Writing on a comedy variety show. Uh, Carol, I, I realized that that first number was a little shaky. Shaky? Shaky? You call that number shaky? You may wonder what was the sophisticated concept that won this Emmy Award for them. Well, the idea was that everybody would be dancing from the very beginning of the show to the very end, and that the whole episode would be a dance marathon. Here's your partner. Ah! Ah! Sounds like an incredibly stupid and easy idea. What else could happen? Two, three, dip! Ah! We put it all together, and it makes for really one of the all-time great episodes of The Muppet Show. Hi, I'm Brian Henson. Roger Moore stars in this next episode of The Muppet Show. All right, who are you working for? The frog, the frog! He was absolutely one of the most debonair guest stars ever to appear on The Muppet Show. <laughs> Roger Mon Amour, you know we are meant to be, vous et moi? Vous et moi, nous? Huh? Oui. Oh, oui, oui, one oui, great oui. moment in this episode is where we took the village people's song in the Navy and performed it with all Viking pigs. The piece itself is a little over two minutes long, and it actually took us a day to shoot it, which is not very good when you're trying to shoot an entire half-hour episode in three days. But as you'll see, the effort was well worth it because it's really created one of the best moments that the Muppets have ever done. Here's The Muppet Show with Roger Moore. <laughs> 